any, any niche within the green industry that you can get the actual training to run the business, but to do the install. All right, so we're just gonna clean that out. We're gonna get the strap on. We'll be ready to go in a couple minutes. All right, that's what she said. If the pond professor Perfectly says so. Right. If he says so, it's yes, got sir. It. And he's right. The day poo to the rescue. Yes, yes. <laughs> Say something nice about it, okay. You gotta give it a little bit of love. There he is. There's the man, Nick. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you? Good, guys. My man, buddy Nick, so the Pond King, another CAC. Thank you for coming to the rescue, by the way. <laughs> Shit. The title, of the, his title, should be Nick to the rescue. We snapped them straps, and you have uh, twenty thousand pound lifting straps. Those are ten. Ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. Well, so depending on the lifting. Okay. This is looking sweet. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. I'll show you around wow. a little bit. Nick was the first person that actually seen this before anybody else did when we were in the initial planning stages. So Nick actually helped communicate with Ed on what the overall design should be and everything else, right? Yeah, well, what your vision was, I told Ed, and, uh, and yeah, they, Ed's like, yeah, we got that, no problem. And now check it out right off of your balcony, right off of the deck. That's going to be sick. <laughs> wow. So this is the one we snapped the strap. <laughs> I remember that. That was the one that was here, right? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah, that strap should be great. But it's not good enough sitting up on the shore. No, it's got to be halfway in the water. I agree. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> if the pond professor Perfectly says so. Right. If he says so, it's yes, got to be. And he's right. We <laughs> got to give Ed a lot of crap while he's here because we only got him for so many I days. I don't expect anything else. So I gotta get like a whole season's worth of crap getting into them. <laughs> you guys are killing it. What are you working on? We're working on a pig rack pond too. So it's a 45 by 25, six and a half foot deep pond with a big waterfall, wetland filter, sun deck, jump off spots. So it's okay. pretty fantastic. Where's yeah. that at? Right in Prior Lake. Three minutes from my house. Oh, it's the train. Oh, nice. Yeah, so when he called, I was like, oh. No problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you guys happen to be in Minnesota and you don't want us to install a pond, call him. Thank you. Nick the yeah. Pond King. Well, Absolutely. you guys are craftsmen just like we are, so you're, you're in good hands either way. Yeah. Okay, Ed, so yep. our first attempt failed because we were moving and grooving and our strap slipped. Yep. For, and it had a fray in it. Yep. You can never use a strap with a fray. No. This time we're not moving. No. We're basically, what we're going to try to do, we got the rock positioned. We got it at the proper elevation. We're gonna lift it straight up, about a foot. We'll take the liner and the, and the geotextiles and we'll pull it underneath. Okay. Make sure everything is good. Once we give you the thumbs up, then you just gently set her back down. That's it. And we're doing a tandem lift. We will have to do a tandem. So I'll be in here. We'll have Greg in the Kubota KXO 40. Yeah. And so a tandem lift is my forks are on the bottom and we hook his bucket up. To and your forks. To my forks and we use his bucket to lift my forks as this won't do it. Right. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So we're splitting that load out a little bit. Alright, so we're just gonna clean that out. We're gonna get the strap on. We'll be ready to go in a couple minutes. Alright, that's what she said. Got it. Right, Done. We want to make sure our straps hold first. Slack 
drop, I'd like to get a little closer down. Good. Scoot your bucket over here. Yeah, there's a tooth bit up here. Okay. Oh, right. That's Not it. Far as I can go. Yep. Yeah, right there. Perfect. All right, Dan, let's bring the tension on it. Day poo to the rescue. Yes, yes. Say something nice yeah, about it. You know. Got to give it a little bit of love. There's not much room, man. You we're kidding. Oh, to get through? Oh, yeah. On each side. It was tight. Yep. And then going over that hump. That hump makes like, you do that. It yeah. wants to shift on you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I didn't yeah. know if that wall would blow out. You know, it's right up against your. Oh, wall the the that, the no. barn wall. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you were in there. I'm like, maybe he just doesn't want to watch. That's that was exactly. Don't ignore her. What's going yeah, on? Behind yeah, me? it ain't happening. <laughs> if I'm not looking, it ain't happening. I know. All right, we're saying goodbye to Alex for the day. Thank you for coming out. Are you coming back tomorrow or no? Uh, we'll see where I get in the office. Who do I get for guys out here? Anybody? Uh, no. Nobody. Well, it depends on what our site's like. We're working on a hill, so if we get a crap ton of rain tonight, good which, chance we can have them out here. Which we are going to get. Right. We're not going up much block. We can walk it all down there and stack it. Yeah. Oh, we right. could even walk yeah, you it. I didn't even notice yeah. it. I've done yeah. it until I was kind of... You make right. little like, stoppers, so you slide with it. You can go yeah. to the next one. It's like yeah. flachingo with blocks. It's like, what? Here we go. Rain is coming in. We've got our tarp laid down, pond liner in. We're actually filling the pond, uh, so Mother Nature is going to help us out. We're filling, uh, washing all the rocks off, emptying it out, but it's 5 o'clock. I mean, we, we couldn't ask for, at least we got a full day's worth of work in. We couldn't ask for a better day. It was an awesome day. I mean, overall, I would call this day just fun. All right, guys, it's the start of day three. We've got some new additions to the team. We've got Russell in, and we got Austin, and uh, we've got the regular crew back. We've got Sean, we've got Kevin, we've got Greg, we've got Ed, Chris will be here, we've got Zach, and we've got Mud. Two and a half inches of rain came in overnight, and this is the marsh area, so we've got to excavate the muck out so that Ed can create, and he created his own filter system. Let's take a quick look at this thing. Ed. So this is like a reverse flow under gravel filter. If you're familiar with aquariums, it's modular in design, but this is from Ed. This is Ed's brain baby right here. Yep, yep. So this was developed 25 years ago. Uh, we did a lot of testing on it. What we have is we have high velocity water coming in over here. We have a flat bottom instead of a circular around, so that's going to allow sedimentation to occur. We have a 93% reduction in water velocity, which is going to allow the big grit and sand and stuff to fill up in this bottom chamber. The water then flows out of these uh, slots and it's going to go up into our aqua box and we have another sedimentation chamber. But the way this is set up is everything is pitched towards that far end and that's our sump. That's going to be our clean out, which you pump this out once a year. Take all that stuff just like you do with your aquarium, that nutrient rich water, pump it into your trees and all that type of yep. stuff. Give it to your plants because it's a beautiful thing. It is awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. So aqua blocks are going to go here and then we're going to have all the different layers of river rock on top, starting with the big stuff, medium, small. 
That's it. So the beautiful part about this thing is to really create the best biological filtration you can, you have to remove the detritus from the water column because that's what suffocates all of your bacteria. We're removing the detritus and then by pumping the water up underneath that gravel, we are creating a bacteria bed which handles the rest of the filtration. Removes ammonia, removes nitrate, removes nitrite, removes everything that you possibly can think of except for the kitchen sink. Am I right, Ed? Nailed it. Right, guys let's just let me explain what we've got going on Ed's built a berm in my pond but the point of this is to force the water to come up through that biological bed that we were talking about earlier and then flow down so it does two things filter and creates aeration this part of the pond is going to be a, a foot higher than this part of the pond intentionally because we need that water movement and we want to make sure that we get everything to flow the way we want it to go So Chris has Russell, well Chris has his own team over here and these guys, Austin and Russell and Chris are doing edging. The biggest thing is, right, if you're in virgin ground or you're building up, right, the biggest thing is that you have nice clean folds behind your rock, like so, we have a clean fold here and we do one fold that's just a six inch one time fold we are four inches higher than water level right here and so we do one clean fold up against the back side of the rock and then we come in and we pin we pin it up against that rock that boulder that way if there's any foot traffic or there's dog traffic coming through here this won't be buoyant and bouncing and liner showing what it also allows you to do can't what it also allows you to do get away from garbage out know, here uh is plant right up to the edge, right? So you have good transition from rock to plants. Uh, and so you can really soften up this edge and change the shape of it. So you can see this here, here's a good example. The vertical comes up, that does not lay down. Um, and it, it does, it makes and breaks the surface area of, of the pond. Because we're not doing a ring of pearls. We're not. A ring of pearls means you just stick boulders all the way around your pond, but you don't ever see that in real life, and Mother Nature doesn't do that, so Never. we're not going to do that, and that's not the Aquascape way. That's a thousand percent right. Okay, yep. boom. So what happens when you go to a few classes, you pick up a thing or three. Thanks, Chris. Any niche within the green industry that you can get the actual training to run the business, but to do the install like you can't I don't know any place that does it with pavers I don't know any place that does it with retaining walls I mean I don't know any place that will do it with grading or digging a basement but when you're doing a pond like this Greg has this thing all laid out step one step two step three 21 steps from start to finish he teaches you how to bid he teaches you how to do um, the marketing he teaches you how to do the install he teaches you how to run your company it's huge this just seemed too good to pass up to work with these guys hand in hand and have this guy and that guy come out and work with me. So, heck yeah. Okay, Ed, now that we're putting it together, you want to explain to me what we're seeing here? Yeah, so what we have here is an upflow biological filter. We have this is our water distribution. So we have high velocity water coming down. Water comes through these little slots. Big sediments are going to drop out. Water then goes into these next chambers. There's a couple things that are happening in here. So when we're talking about removing sediments, it's all about controlling water velocity. 
When you slow the water down, it allows the finer sediments to drop out. You mentioned it earlier, Stan, the uh, microorganisms living inside the filter, they don't like detritus, they don't like that muck inside of there. It clogs it up and it's not efficient. So we wanna allow that stuff to accumulate inside of here. But the other thing, if you look at these, uh, these little boxes, they seem very simple. Um, they are actually designed for H20 loading. So we could drive um, with 18 inches of gravel on it, you could drive a, a, a 40, a, a 80,000 pound vehicle over it. You can drive semi trucks on top of these plastic boxes. It's unbelievable. I have them underneath parking lots. But the other thing I want to talk about, you see all these little fins and everything? And there's a series of internal panels. When the water comes in here, there are two different types of flow. There's laminar flow, and then there's mixed flow. Laminar flow means you just have a solid mass of water moving and it's not disturbed. Engineers love that because you could move water very efficiently from point A to point B. From a biomimicry standpoint, we want a mixed flow. We want to create lots of turbulence inside the water because when you create turbulence, all that water swirls around and small particles start bouncing into each other. When they bounce into each other, it allows the sedimentation process to occur. It also increases dissolved oxygen and gives us even dissolved oxygen through the entire system. So all these little fins and panels inside of here mix that water thoroughly for us. Then our, with this system, it's going to take approximately 10 minutes for the water to go from here to the top of this. So the water's going to go really, really slow. Then we have all this river rock on top. So when you take river rock, again, I'll just demonstrate here. You can see we're going to have this gravel on top. So instead of it being a giant void, now we have eliminated the void space. So now the water velocity starts picking up because it's going through the little interstitial spaces of the gravel. So the water velocity gets faster and faster and faster as it flows through the filter media, which actually keeps it from getting clogged. So this took years and years of development of screwing projects up over oh, during that time, ripping stuff out, figuring out the how the system actually works. And now we have a working yeah. model and I've been doing this system now for decades without any problem. Would you yeah. say that this may be the world's most advanced residential oh. filtration system for a pond? Absolutely, because of the modular nature of it, the simplicity of it, and years of operation and testing that we have with, without a doubt. I say residential because commercial applications require massive pumps uh, and it's a completely kind of a different setup, right? Correct, correct. Yep, yep. yep. but for a residential pond, Absolutely. it this doesn't get better. This is the cat's meow. This is it. All right, and you created <laughs> it. All right, Edward Pondhands did it. All right, <laughs> let's keep going. So now Ed is creating the spillways that'll allow the water to pass through from the filtration center down to the lower pond. Man, that's one of the stones he wants to use. And he's going to create strategic spillways which will give us the ability to actually walk across from one side to the other side without walking all the way around. So we gotta get a boulder underneath there to support it, Ed? Yeah. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is that uh, the step, we know the elevation for the step. So we have to create a bed of rock work to support that. Now the mass of the rock is actually going straight down in there, but you can see we got just a couple inches right here. So we're gonna set a rock right here. We'll get a little bit more gravel under there. Now we should be able to drop that in place. The other thing we gotta do, you can see how this rock is sloped a little bit. We gotta try to get that side up a touch, but we can't do anything until we get this stabilized. Okay, ready? Yep. Careful. One, two, three. Alright. Get your paper out. Are we going up 
against it no. towards you at all. No. At this point, it has to go in and that has to go in. You want me to lift that up? Uh, yeah. It's gonna be a good one. All right, God bless. Go get them, you guys. We'll be back tomorrow for another day and uh, putting another rock or two in.